Hey guys, Fame and I are here just having some quality grass time and I thought it would be fun to do a quick video on sort of the most economical path to horse ownership. If you're looking to get into horses, to buy your very first horse, what would be the way that you could do that on the most limited budget possible? And I'm not going to give you exact numbers, but I do want to talk about some strategic choices that you can make that will save yourself a lot of money in the long term. So the first thing I would say to do is to invest in some lessons because the better of a rider that you are, the more options you will have when it comes time to actually getting your horse. And I think the more skills you have as a rider not only makes riding more enjoyable, but it will just open up the world of potential options to you and give you a lot more flexibility. When it comes time to actually choosing your horse, I would pick the best trained, most experienced for the riding you wanna do, horse that you can afford. Um, even though you might save yourself some money now by picking a less tra lesser trained horse or a less experienced horse, um, as they say, if you don't pay for it now, you'll pay for it later. And it actually will probably more, be more expensive paying for it later. So it really is worth the money to spend up front to buy a better trained horse than to try and buy a horse that doesn't have as much training that you need to invest in later. Um, because a lot of times those horses aren't necessarily proven and there's no guarantee that even with the right training, you and that horse are gonna be a good fit. I would also try to find a horse that is good barefoot because shoes are another monthly expense that if you can have a horse that can go barefoot, you'll save yourself a lot of money on the monthly part. Um, and I would also try to find a horse that is what they call an easy keeper, uh, which is a horse that does great on just your standard amount of hay and doesn't need a lot of extra supplementation or grain to keep weight on. because. The other thing I was gonna recommend is that you keep your horse in pasture. Pasture is usually the easiest and least expensive board option that will save you uh, hundreds of dollars usually every month. It's very economical. The horses can move around and get lots of exercise. And um, if you have a horse that's a harder keeper, they may not do so well in pasture because they're not getting enough food. One more thing I wanted to add about the purchase of the horse. Not only do you wanna get a horse that's got um, an adequate amount of experience for you and the training that you need to do the riding that you wanna do and to suit your level, but you also wanna make sure that you get a horse that is healthy and sound. And that means doing the vet check before you purchase the horse because that will reveal if the horse has um, any kind of health issue that can be discovered in a veterinary exam. Uh, that you don't want to get into because uh, another big drain on your pocketbook is if you end up purchasing a horse that has health issues and unfortunately sometimes things come up anyway but you will certainly save yourself a lot of money in the long run if you purchase a horse that is super sound and healthy to begin with. The other thing that you might not have thought about is to start developing your network. So start um, getting to know some horse people, maybe join a horseman's association or a riding club of some kind. Um, find a, a riding instructor, which if you're taking lessons you will already have, or potentially a lot of riding instructors are also horse trainers. The reason for this is twofold. Number one is that uh, there will be opportunities that you might not otherwise find if you know more horse people. So available horses that maybe aren't necessarily listed for sale online. Um, if people have tips or experiences or horses they're maybe thinking about finding a home for, um, you won't know about those things unless you have some horse friends. And a lot of times you can make some really great connections and save yourself money by knowing the right people. The other thing that's so important about having a network that you're starting to build now is because hopefully that riding instructor or trainer or experienced horse friends will be able to help you not make a big mistake in purchasing your horse. <laughs> um, there are a number of instructors and trainers that actually will um, charge a fee for a service to help you shop for horses. Um, they will find the right horse for you and they can save you a lot of time and money and potentially not getting screwed over by the wrong person uh, because they know what to look for and they know you and they know your situation. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to building your network early on. Another way to save money is to get used tack. 
uh, used saddle, used bridles. You can find all kinds of stuff on the internet or at boarding facilities or at Horsemen's Association meetings uh, where you can do tack swaps or you can buy used tack at a discounted price and that'll save you a bunch of money. Um, also buy a used horse trailer because horse trailers brand new, just like cars, um, can be quite expensive and then they lose most of their value within the first few years. And so if you can get an older horse trailer that is still safe and has been decently maintained, you can save yourself a lot of money that way too. Another potential cost saving strategy would be to lease your horse where you've got someone else uh, riding your horse certain days of the week and they pay you and that helps offset your board costs. Um, I know several people who do this and it works out really well for them. Uh, it definitely depends on the horse and on your situation and where you're at. Um, but it's another reason to choose the best trained horse that you can possibly afford in the beginning because then that horse will be more desirable for other people people if you're looking to get into sort of a leasing lessee situation. Um, again, not necessarily a choice for everyone, but it's another idea that I've seen people do to help offset some of the costs of horse ownership. So hopefully those give you some ideas if you're looking to get into horses on a budget. That was how I got started and I got completely hooked onto it and uh, it's been a total life changer for me. So if you have any questions or thoughts about what I shared, uh, leave me a comment down below. Uh, definitely know that there are ways to get into horses that aren't terribly expensive, but they do still cost a fair amount of money and they are something that you do need to be budgeting for. Um, but hopefully, hi, hopefully those five ideas but hopefully those five strategies will give you some ideas for potentially bringing a horse into your life. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.